Okay, so to write DAX, I mean to create a formula, the first thing that we need to do is to understand the interface. And this interface is to create a new DAX measure, I mean a new DAX formula. This is called measure here in Power BI and Excel, but in both of them. So to create a measure, you will go to the modeling tab and you will click here on this new measure. There are other places as well where you can do that, but let us start from this one modeling tab and then here we have the option of new measure so let us click here and it should open the new interface for you a small window in the same dashboard and here it is so the first thing that we need to do is to define a name for our measure and that is that should be you know the kind of function that you are creating so the the function that i am going to create right now is basically the total of the value so i'm going to say please create the value of a total underscore ftp so FTP is basically for the period. So I want this measure to do is to calculate a value that should be specifically for that specific period. Kind of, you know, 2019 should only bring the value of 2019. And this is going to be very simple. Just write the formula and that formula is going to be sum. So once you click on sum, this option should appear and just press the tab key on your keyboard. And now you will notice that Excel is giving you, Power BI is giving you this kind of, you know, open uh, drop down. So you can actually pick up the value from here. Or you can simply write what you want to sum. I want to sum the amount, right? So I will simply start typing A-M-O-U-N-T and it, it, it will actually take you to the option. So rather than writing that amount straight away i will click this here and what this will actually do for me is that it will actually bring in the table name as well so you know that in our power bi we have actually four tables so our power bi should know that which table which column we are referring to so we should be first giving the table name and then we should be giving the column name so that power bi should know that which column should be it, it should be adding but don't worry you will not be facing this problem you will simply write the name of the field and it will give you the same uh, uh, quick reference to table as well and all you have to is select from there okay so i have simply written total ftp and that is sum table and amount so you must be thinking that where did i define that please bring in only that specific period and that is basically the default functionality of excel what that means is if i can just open this value for you uh, let me zoom in and i will show you what that means so what that means is for example if i am talking about this value here right so you can see that this value has two filters the first one is 2018 and the second option is to uh, sales so when when power bi is calculating this specific value it will only bring in you know we have not hard coded any we have not given any period references specifically so power bi will simply follow the command that is being given in this particular matrix and that command is 2018 and sales so that value should be only the value of sales and only the value of 2018 and this is going to be a very simple dex measure and it should actually produce the same value that you know the default function the default function of uh, power bi matrix was doing so let me do that let me press the enter and you know uh, it should do the answer for me but before i do that let me show you a few, few more things first of all i want the value in whole number that is fine i want the value with de zero decimals that is also fine i want that value to be comma separated and other than that I want this measure to be placed in the GL. So you can select different tables from here that where do you want to place this, you know, uh, where do you want to place this measure? So I want to place that in GL, but you know, that is not going to be making any difference, but it is just a better practice to make sure that you are organizing your measures in some way, at least to understand that. Okay, and do we need to do anything with the data category? No, we don't need to. Perfect, so that is uh, perfectly fine. And I will just press enter and it should add that measure for me right so give it a second and it should be added by now let me go there and let me show you okay so you will notice that in your gl here if you can see it uh, in your gl table here there is one new word and that is total ftp one new field and there's a calculator sign sign right behind um, on the left of it which is basically showing you that this is a measure 
So what I need to do next is I need to check out this measure that if it is working fine or no. So for that, I will not spoil my dashboard here. I will create a separate page on my dashboard and then we will delete the you know work that we are going. So I will simply copy and paste my PNL from here. Control C and then Control V to new page. And now that we have our PNL, what I'm going to do is that in the values pane, I'm going to bring my total FTP as well. And once I do that, it should create a separate column for both the measures. And now you can see that I will just zoom in for you. And now you can see that for all the values, all the values that we can see here, the amount is same. So whatever my default function was preparing, for example, in 2018, sales was 3.575 and similarly my measure is doing the same. In 2009, again, we have the same values and in 2020, we have the same values. So you can check any value out there and you can see that we have the same value in all of those functions. Now you, you must be thinking that, then why we did that anyway? Well, we are just, you know, starting to learn uh, something that is going to be much wider. So of course I will prefer to use that total FTP. So, you know, what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to delete the amount from here and then that should actually replace uh, to, uh, my, my measure should actually replace the default measure of Power BI. And with that, I think there is no need for this dashboard anymore. I will delete that later on. So let me go to my PNL and I'm going to do is in this dashboard here, I'm going to bring in total FTP into the amount and I'm going to delete the amount that was given previously. And similarly, these values should also be done the same. So gross profit should be, you know, the total of FTP should be replacing the amount here as well. So I will again zoom in to show you if these values are same. So they are, so let me delete this one. And you know, all of these values down there, like if the operating profit, PBIT and net profit, you will also be replacing them because we only want to use our own measures. But before we do that, I got to tell you, I got to discuss something that is also important. And that is, even though this visual here, it can show you the gross profit and these visuals can show you the operating profit and net profit. Power BI until now at this moment, our database in Power BI does not know what is the value of gross profit and how to calculate the gross profit. We could only achieve the gross profit here using a filter in this particular visual and anywhere else in this report in the system, the gross profit calculation is not available. Which means that if I try to make any calculation on gross profit margin, that is going to be, you know, a lot difficult. So what we need to do is that we need to find a way with DAX that we can simply achieve, calculate our gross profit and other values uh, with the formula rather than applying any filter. So a very simple rule that we are going to follow, we are not going to use filters anywhere unless you know that is going to be very exceptional case or you know that is going to be very, very much needed. We are going to calculate all the values with DEX and what we are going to do that we are going to start learning that using this cross profit here and let us do that in the next lecture.